to greetings, good afternoon, good evening, and or good, good morning, depending on uh, where you may be. And welcome to our webinar um, on always on marketing strategy, a powerful and cost effective cost effective approach to destination promotion. Uh, brought to you by the uh, Pacific Tourism Organization (SPTO) and presented by the South Pacific Pocket Guide. I'd like to introduce myself uh, for those of you joining me here for the first time. I am uh, Atama Tumanlo, and I am the Digital Marketing Officer here at the Marketing Division of the Pacific Tourism Organization. And I will be your host for today. Um, the purpose of this webinar is to help you, the Pacific Tourism uh, stakeholders, in preparation for recovery, um, introduce you to new opportunities as well as new networks. Um, this, uh, these Webinars aligned with SPTO's transition from uh, tra traditional marketing to digital marketing, as well as adapting to the new norm and uh, post pandemic. Um, let me just go through uh, a couple of technical notes. Feel free, um, if you bend with uh, permits, please do turn your cameras on. We'd like to uh, try and connect with you even through this virtual uh, medium. So please, if, uh, please do if you can. Uh, of course, we are recording this webinar, so um, if it, for any reason you don't want to be on the screen or when asking questions, then you can turn off your camera, but please ensure your mic is on when, when you ask questions. Um, everyone is muted uh, by default, which keeps the background noise and um, helps, keeps away the background noise and helps the presenter and the attendance focus on the presentation this, uh, this afternoon, so um, bear, bear that in mind. Um, there will be two parts to this webinar. Uh, first will be the presentation itself uh, by uh, Robin, and then on to the question and answer section for the second half of the webinar. Uh, I've taken note of some of the questions that you, uh, some of you have included in the registration form, but if you do have any questions during presentation, uh, please note it down and um, wait for the Q&A time. And I encourage you um, to ask as many questions as you want. Uh, we like to have a lot of engagements, uh, engagement during this uh, webinar, so uh, um, yeah, go for it. We're just allowing in uh, some, uh, some more participants. Um, um, but before that, um, I just have an update from the SPTO um, in response to widespread and uh, significant impacts of uh, COVID-19 in the Pacific Tourism um, industry. The Pacific uh, Tourism Organization has launched uh, the SPTO Jobs Link. Um, this is an initiative that aims to bridge the gap between the unemployed and uh, unemployed uh, tourism workers and employers throughout the region via free and uh, easy to use website. The SPTO Jobs Link website is part of the COVID-19 response support program under the New Zealand uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, NZFET, and SPTO partnership, which was formalized in uh, October 2020. And, um, and now I'd like to, uh, um, and the, yeah, the link for the site will be uh, uh, posted in chat. So uh, if uh, feel free to check it out. Um, if you're a job seeker or an employer, um, uh, yeah, have a look around on the site. Um, yeah, and I'll post it later in uh, the chat. Um, but now I'd like to hand over to our presenter for today, who's uh, an expert in digital marketing, uh, in the digital marketing space, and has been in, in the tourism industry for quite a number of years, and uh, to introduce himself and um, begin with uh, his presentation. Bula, Robin. Bula. Um, all right, let me just share my screen straight away. I hope, Sebastian, you can hear us now. Uh, I know he was saying in, uh, in the chat he couldn't, but okay. So hopefully you guys can see my screen right now. So I'm glad to spend about an hour with you guys all today to discuss one of my favorite subjects, which is always on marketing. I have been lucky enough to be part of the implementation of uh, several such strategies around the world, and I know how effective it can be yet quite cheap. So this webinar will go over the whole concept in quite a simple way. It's kind of a meet and greet introduction to uh, always on marketing strategy. So if you are already familiar with the subject, in all truth, you may not be in the right place. However, if you're after a new way to approach your marketing in a post COVID world, then we'll have a great lively discussion together for the next hour or so. So let's get this show on the road. Um, we're going to start by covering what we'll be uh, going over on today. So first, we will uh, define in depth what always on marketing is with some specific examples along the way. 
Then we'll touch on the advantages of using it for your business and destination and how it can save you thousands of dollars and headaches. After that, we'll move on to implementation and timing. And finally, we'll wrap up with a little bit of a QA. and a um, For me, the Q&A is the best part of today's chat, so please don't be scared to ask any question. The more you ask, the more we all learn. So get cracking with the question in the chat and we'll have a Tama uh, read them with me at the end in about 30 minutes. But first, a little bit about us at South Pacific Pocket Guide. I started my first business in tourism a little over 10 years ago. And shortly after that, with my partner, we had what is now, now become the largest travel guide to New Zealand, nzpocketguide.com. We are content and marketing experts and we know content inside and out. And this is what we do every single day. We have now expanded to popular Fiji, beautiful Nui and fascinating Tonga and are looking for more South Pacific destinations to cover. So if you know of any, say hi. Okay, enough about me, let's get started. So defining always on marketing is no easy task because it means a lot to a lot of different people. Um, so it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, so today we will not be focusing on making your business de or destination available 24 seven. We will, oh, I got a lot of notification right now. Is everything okay? Can, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep yeah, going. Yeah, I can hear you. Sweet. Um, okay, so um, today we'll not be focusing on making your business available 24-7, uh, like a lot of marketer interpret this notion. Rather, we will be focusing on implementing a continuous campaign strategy that engages with customer throughout the entire travel journey and evolves incrementally based on data, trends, and results. Now I know that it sounds like a lot of theory, uh, theoretical fancy talk, but I will break everything down bit by bit in the next few slides. The main thing that I want you to remember here is what always on marketing is not. It's not a lot of work and it's not super expensive. In fact, I will argue throughout the upcoming slides that it is the opposite of that. To put it simply, always on marketing is an incredibly long-term based campaign based on real world messaging that continuously evolved. And those three notions are the theme of our next three upcoming slides. All right, so uh, let's start with the long-term aspect of things. The best way to think of an always on marketing strategy is to look at it like a very, 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 very long campaign. Your message will continuously get out there through all your and other people's messages, uh, other channels. Um, so rather than thinking, what do I want to promote or what campaign should we run at the moment? Think about what you would like to be known as. What makes your destination unique compared to all other destinations? What makes you stand out? What are your unique selling points or USPs? Once that is done, you can get around to create one or two core messages. Those messages must showcase your unique selling points, of course, but the goal here is to come up with something easy to remember because it stands out, but also very representative to what you are offering. Now this message can and needs to be spread over a range of platform and websites. This can be your own website, of course, but also other websites. Starting with your own website is the easiest thing to do, but this may mean creating a secondary website too to promote that new message. If you ever host families, um, uh, trips, or generate any kind of media coverage, you now have a reliable angle for the story you want to be told, the story that you can tell and sell. This means that each and every time you think about any coverage regarding your destination or your business, you can pull that strategy folder and rely on this research to know what information to provide to this particular media. This includes social media influencers, traditional medias, travel related pages or websites, social media posts, photos, videos, etc. If you are a destination, this is when working with third party websites like us is critical in relaying your message. For instance, we are very much looking forward adding a plethora of stargazing articles on the new Pocket Guide website, now that the country is an official dark sky reserve and plans on promoting this heavily. 
In the same spirit, if you are a destination management organization, this is also an opportunity to engage with your whole community with the new strategy. Tourism New Zealand famously did this incredibly well with their 100% pure campaign, where the logo and motto could be found on pretty much every New Zealand website and was relayed by the whole industry at any opportunity. In fact, this was so popular that they were trying to emulate this with a Chucky Promise campaign before COVID hit. Needless to say that if your strategy becomes industry-wide, the effectiveness of it is tremendously amplified. In short, the idea of creating new campaigns each season or each year is kind of dead. We are entering an age where continuous, well-informed campaigns will be king. Now, when it comes down to copy, meaning creating content for your campaign, you still need to keep your customer in mind and speak real world. We are in an age of over-information. We are absolutely swamped with loads and loads of information, many of which is redundant and irrelevant at best and widely misleading at, more, at worst. Um, so when creating content or commissioning content to match your new strategy, you need to make sure that it adds value to your consumer. Otherwise, you will lose the interest and worst, you may lose credibility. We're gonna take an example here. When I stumble upon an article about beach sunrises, but it only includes generic statements about how it is nice to hold uh, your partner while staring at the morning sun and the fact that it will make my day great to start, start in such a way. And the whole article is over 800 words long and ha you, you basically have absolutely lost me. And this is a real example that I did stumble upon. This article should have included information such as the best beaches to go to, the usual sunrise times in winter and in summer, maybe a tip or two about eye protection, and even a couple of cafe recommendations at the end to follow the sunrise with the local breakfast. Another reason to keep your information relevant to your consumer needs is that, well, you want it to be read. If you have a generic or obscure piece of content, it will linger in the dark corner of the internet and will never be read. In order to keep your information relevant to what your consumer needs, it's always a good idea to keep in mind the different stages that travelers go through when planning a trip. At that point, you can ask yourself, what is my traveler wanting to know now? And how can I present this information in a way that also pushes my message? As a general rule, consumers go over three different stages when it comes to travel. Dreaming about their next holiday, planning and booking their holiday, and experiencing their holiday. The dream stage usually happens on social media. Okay, um, sorry, I just get a lot of notification on the Zoom right now. So uh, yeah, the dream stage usually happens on social media. This is where destination can convert dreamers into active considerers. The planning and booking stage usually happens on editorial content sites. This is where we see the sharpest drop off where one out of nine of those active considerers never make it past the first couple of online searches. They just give up on their trip and go back to stage one, dreaming about a new destination. This usually happens when there is a lack of information available or a lack of the right information available. In fact, we recently ran a survey to travelers from US, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and other countries. And we learned that 78% of travelers state that the biggest barrier to travel to the South Pacific Islands was the lack of trustworthy information available. This stage, the plan and book stage, is where we at South Pacific Pocket Guide come in and create compelling websites that answer real world questions about your destination and convert dreamers into bums in plain seats. Finally, the travel stage is critical as well. It's where operators can keep pushing their message or the destination's message in order to cover, convert those travelers into referrers, sending their friends over and even better, becoming repeat travelers. Now during all three of those stages, traveler will have different needs when it comes to content. And I won't really elaborate too much on this as I covered it a lot with example in our previous SPTO webinar, but in short, this is the core of our successful content process in order to provide a one-stop shop for all information about your destination in line with your strategy. So when creating your content, you need to go over each of these stages and find ways to provide useful content that pushes your message. 
The last point on this slide covers media creation. That's your videos, photos, media kit, logos, stationaries, image signatures, etc. All that will only need to be done once and then gradually refreshed throughout the months and years. Your hero images will match your new message rather than having to cover a wide range of travel style, for instance. So make sure to collect media that matches your strategy rather than generic magazine shots. Now, admittedly, this is when things get a bit more interesting because once you have determined your always own strategy and message, things are not set in stone. And both your messaging and your assets need to evolve with the times. First up, technology and taste will always evolve. For instance, when website needed to become mobile first, meaning looking good on mobile uh, was a priority over looking good at desktop computer, despite the fact that we already had an always on marketing strategy in place for our site, we had to adapt. When 360 degrees um, imageries was all the rage, we had to adapt and create some. When TikTok became huge, we had to adapt. When Google decided that website speed will be uh, a major factor in choosing which website to rank first in online searches, we had to adapt. So that's just some of many examples. It is crucial to constantly research the upcoming trends and be proactive about it. And I'll be 100% honest with you. When looking back at the result of spending a couple of thousands of dollars to be the first tourism business to build a drone to showcase IL 360 imageries of New Zealand, I think it was a waste of money, but I don't regret it. If, it. if it took off, it would have been huge. On the other hand, when looking back at spending tens of thousands of dollars to have state-of-the-art cloud servers to host our site, I regret nothing because it placed us well ahead of our competitors. So there is always going to be hit and misses, but I prefer having taken those risks. Keeping an eye on trends is also crucial to adapt your content to current travelers' needs. If, for instance, best spoke experience become the new buzzwords, then create a couple of pieces of content around that matching your current message to it. Better even, you can commission a couple of media outlets to run travel stories on this. Checking in regularly with consumers is key. Visitor satisfaction surveys are great, but monitoring social conversation Trip advisor reviews and even running online surveys will help, help you gauge the current feels about your campaign. Plus, checking results obviously should inform your marketing decisions drastically. Since this is quite an obvious point, I'm not going to extend on it, but if I'm being presumptuous, um, call me out on it in the chat and I'll go over it again. By the way, remember to post your questions in the chat. We have a QA coming up with Atama in a few minutes. Finally, combining all those learnings into a thinking ahead board is a fantastic way to always know where you are heading. We continuously write down notes of trends, new tech developments and ideas and integrate them into our always on strategy. And if it does not fit, it's kind of okay. Uh, you can't do it all, we can't do it all. But at least you have considered it and you are aware of it for when it may become relevant to your strategy once again. All right, let's move on to something more fun. Drawings or graph, like the boring people like me like to call them. So in this one, I wanted to go over a visual explainer of what always on strategy could be. And in this example, we look at a company or destination website, but this example could be applied to any business or any destination. All right, so the ideal that we're having on screen right now is the goal of all of us, having a marketing success constantly increasing. And in this example, if it's a website, that could mean your traffic constantly uh, goes up and your engagement metrics, such as your time on site is always going up forever. It's ideal. Now the current is what I witnessed most company, destination organization, etc., do, which is launching a website and running it as is for five, seven, or even 10 or 15 years for some at which point there is something that breaks or sales are so down or there is a new employee that puts their foot down and they have to pretty much start from scratch with a new website just to catch up with the new trends. This means finding new medias, photos, videos, etc., new editorial content that is not even worth updating what exists, building a new website from scratch 
It's also a start from scratch for Google as out of date websites are more and more penalized. And all that to only let the website be run into the ground yet again and having to do it all over again. So don't do that. Now, the realistic is what we do and what many successful organizations start to do, which is continuously improving the existing infrastructures. Uh, for instance, we changed our server for all our sites very recently. Um, they are continuously uh, update and improve their content. We create new content daily and we update existing content weekly or monthly. We also research new tech trends and have implemented several of them on the site in order to improve both ranking and engagement. Now, depending on what business you run, this does not have to be a daily job at all. This could be a three month review with your team or with your marketing agency, just to make sure that you are ahead of the curve. And this is what always on marketing is. Now, this graph is uh, here is applied to websites, but the same could and should apply to say your image library. Don't let your photo get too old, continuously seek new ones. It could and should be applied to your online advertising or your flyers or your Facebook page or your listing on third party websites. Let's say that you are a company in Fiji and are mentioned on the Fiji.travel website. Make sure that you update this listing regularly with either new images or new content. Make sure that you send you, um, to Tourism Fiji new imagery regularly. Uh, and make sure that you do the same with us at FijiPocketGuy.com. For instance, pre-COVID, we had 75,000 readers per month on the site. So if your information was out of date, that's a lot of people getting the wrong info or seeing a tired old photo. So this graph also applies to your overall strategy. It can incrementally evolve and 10 years from now, it will and should look completely different. In short, this graph should be your approach to anything to do with marketing. All right, now that we have the meaty part of this webinar out of the way, we can go over the fun part, which is looking at how easy your life will be after you have implemented an always on marketing strategy. Again, these slides uh, sound like a lot of schmancy talk, but I will break down everything in simple terms within the next few slides. The main thing that I want you to remember here is that implementing an always on marketing strategy is easy and cost saving. In short, running an always-on marketing strategy will help you have a uniform messaging supported by fresh visuals that won't cost you an arm on a leg or days of your life. And once more, those three notions are, funnily enough, the theme of the next three upcoming slides. Okay, so one of the grandest, super best, mostest, bestest advantage of running an always on marketing strategy is that your business or destination will have a consistent branding and messaging. All content can be created under the same objective and messaging. You can rely on your agreed upon strategy for each pieces of content rather than starting from scratch each time. Should it be visuals, photos, videos, or editorials, but even your ads. When planning their holidays, travelers are encountering thousands of ads, business listings, and reviews. Making sure that all your listings are consistent, all your ads promote the right message, and all your reviews are responded to will increase conversion. There is nothing worse than seeing one thing and then another about the same business. Using an always-on strategy can even be done incredibly creatively. I've, consult I've consulted for a tourism business pre-COVID to devise a consistent messaging using remarketing. We ran a remarketing ad at very cheap cost to, uh, to clients that have already purchased their services. The ad stated something like, um, we can't wait to cheers with you in Fiji's largest swimmer bar. This is an example only that was on the client, but that was a great way to build long-term branding. We even ran the ad for a few weeks post-holiday to thank the travelers for their stay. Cohesion of messaging will also help you deliver a very simple to understand message to consumers. If we look at destination-wide and take New Zealand as an example once again, despite assets, visuals, editorials, photos, etc., 
constantly changing, there was pretty much only one message sent to consumers by Tourism New Zealand and all tourism businesses in the country for almost one decade. New Zealand is 100% pure. All efforts revolve around this one simple theme. In, in doing so, we'll in turn increase uniformity amongst your media coverage. No matter the publication, your message will be coherent and the consumer will be able to relate one information with another and be reassured by its consistency. I won't really go over the Tourism New Zealand example again, but being able to get a whole industry under one banner um, or an entire employee base for that matter is incredibly powerful. A simple list of key points that each and every employee in a resort have, know and master can help build a splendid brand. Finally, when consumers become referrers, they often base their pitch on the information they received on top of their own experiences. Have you ever heard people say, plus this was the largest swimmer bar in the whole country? They got that message from staff, websites, brochures, ads, etc. So if your message is consistent, you ensure that you, in some fashion, control what message is passed on even during direct referrals. If consumers get only one message, they can adopt it, make it their own and pass it along. Okay, so it's time to count nickels and dimes. Um, so yes, running always on marketing strategies will help you reduce your marketing costs. Here's a graph from the good folk at, folks at Ogen comparing the effective cost per acquisition in online advertising for a European city between multiple campaigns and an always on campaign backed by great content over 40 days. It shows that the cost per acquisition, uh, uh, per acquired traveler, sorry, is almost five times lower with always on marketing strategy. And that's because once your message is recognized and your USP is understood by your consumer, your conversion cost shrinks. In this graph, we are talking about real conversions, not just clicks, but actual travelers sitting in planes. Now, cost-wise, running multiple campaigns will also require new creatives, new campaign pushes, new supporting content. However, if you choose to use an always-on marketing strategy in which a destination runs only one continuous campaign as opposed to multiple burst campaigns, then your cost will be massively reduced. Great content will be key. In fact, it will help save a lot of campaign spend as it will create legacy content pieces that support your campaign even years down the line. This content will in time rank itself on search engine and require little to no promotion, while you can focus your marketing dollars on acquiring new leads to direct them to one of those many converting pieces of content you already have. And this content should be on your site, on third-party websites and in key market websites. So finally, third-party website can now be a major asset in your marketing arsenal rather than a one-shot. But we'll go over third-party website in a couple of slides when taking ourselves as example. The same cost reducing goes for your image library, for instance. Continuously updating your photo library with, new, with a few new shots each month will be much less costly than organizing a nationwide photo shoot, for example. Now, this does not mean that monitoring your results and tweaking your ads and content, etc., from time to time should not be done. This only means that you won't have to start a brand new campaign from scratch. Just slightly update your existing one as time passes and trends evolve. So in short, you will still spend some money on your marketing, but you get more bang for your buck over time. And by the way, this chart is only for about 40 days. So think of it in years. Finally, the last main advantage that we'll cover today is saving your time. And I'll go quite quickly on this one because I will also save you time on this. So you'll save a lot of time by only having to refer to your always-on marketing strategy plan each time you are working on your marketing. No need for new brainstorming sessions and long meetings for each new campaign. Do it once, update it incrementally, and go for gold. This will also help you make sure that all messages are on brand. Should it be on social, on socials, on ads, on websites, on brochures, or via emails? Just ask, does this match my marketing strategy? If it does, great. Otherwise, get cracking again. 
you'll save a ton of time on collecting imagery as an asset for your campaign. Since your campaign will always be on the same message, you can always rely on the asset you already have and only have to add a handful each time rather than having to create a whole new suite of assets. When it comes to training agents or staff, you will also have only one cohesive message. So no need to retrain regularly, just small incremental updates, which in turn will increase the retention of your information. We touched a little bit on updating websites or campaigns, but the same goes for brochures and flyers. So for this example, I'm gonna talk about brochures for a change. Rather than having to start from scratch when launching a new product, you can use the templated brochures you already have that matches your current strategy and be done in minutes rather than be done in hours. So when looking at websites or entire online campaigns, updating it regularly compared to having to start from scratch is day and night. But we've already talked about that, so I'm going to refrain myself to keep going. Finally, the one takeaway from this is that if you set yourself right in the first place, build on what's working, and monitor for upcoming trends and changes, you only need minimal amount of man hour to generate fantastic results. I know very well a multi-million dollar company here in New Zealand that only has one person in charge of their marketing using such a strategy. And I collaborate with them often to generate absolute killer return of investment. So you must have seen this one coming and that's right. Today, right now, this very hour is the best time to get started on implementing an always on marketing strategy. We are already seeing consumers being in market for their next holiday. In fact, they have been in market for months. For example, on our Tonga Pocket Guide website, we have between three and 4,000 readers each week, and most of them are in Australia, the US, and New Zealand. People are hitching for a holiday and um, they are planning it now. The thing is though that people are also planning much more. Google released some data recently showing that travelers are doing much more search prior to their trip. And so they should. But with 86% of travelers starting their research on Google, companies and nations that have a lackluster online presence will miss out. In fact, as mentioned previously, we ran a survey last year that showed that over three quarters of travelers chose not to travel to a South Pacific destination in the last five years due to the lack of trustworthy information. If they cannot find the answer to their questions about your destination online, they will be gone. The good news is that that's basically what we do here at South Pacific Pocket Guide. We earn the big bucks in New Zealand and we spend that money creating world-class websites for South Pacific destinations. We created the website Nure Pocket Guide, pictured on screen, free of charge for Nure Tourism. It is the largest database of information for travelers ever created for Nure. There is already over 450 articles on it, which is massive for such a small nation. And this in turn creates a reliable information source for travelers to plan their trip. From the site, we funnel them to booking sites, new tourism or local operators to book their holidays. We use our experience from New Zealand to create the best third party information source to plan a trip in your destination. In fact, a few months after launching Tonga Pocket Guide, which is a similar website covering the country of Tonga, the CEO of the Ministry of Tourism called the project the best family that he ever hosted, um, since the family is all they had to organize for our team to create a massive portal for the nation's tourism industry. Now we know that sadly, in our day and age, if you are not online in the eyes of international travelers, you just don't exist. So we are in a mission to get the South Pacific online. Okay, enough about us. So before we move on to the q and I just wanted to wrap it all up with a quick few points on how you can get going with starting an always on marketing strategy. The first thing to do is to understand what unique thing is your business or destination offering. What is your unique selling point or USP? What you will want to lean on to base your pitch. This does not have to be only one thing, but it shouldn't be a long list either. Next, you will want to get your info updated online. I have this one near the top because it's so super important that I did not want it any lower. So you will need to, up, to update your listings on any site that you are listed on, making sure that they showcase what you want them to. Another good reason to talk to website early is also to understand how they are selling you and what is the current conversation about your business. 
Um, this may help you co create your message, um, your message in, in itself. Now that you understand your USP better, you can come up with a message that will be the core of your always on strategy. This is what will be the cornerstone of all your marketing for the years to come, but it may evolve a bit as we mentioned before. Once you have your message, it's time to get to work and create campaigns, um, creatives, images, videos, and all your supporting assets you may need from your booking confirmation emails to your business card, brochures, social media pages, and even websites. Next up is to spread the message out. That's your campaign launch online. That's contacting third-party websites with your new images and or your new USPs. And since you already touched base, with, touched base with them a couple of steps ago, you may still have the conversation in your inbox. So that makes it easier. Also, if you are a business, don't forget to share your assets with your local destination management organization. They always love to get new assets to use in their campaign. Now check on your campaign results through analytics, bookings, visitor surveys, etc., and learn what works to build on it and what does not work to ditch it. And finally, schedule yourself some time each week to open your mind to what is new in your region, country, industry, but even worldwide, so you are ahead of the trends. As mentioned before, you'll have to constantly update your assets, campaigns, websites, etc., to create a virtuous circle of self-improvement for your campaign, generating better and better results over time at the cost of only a few hours a week. As a result, you won't have the massive daunting task of having to do it all again looming in the horizon. All right, that's it for me now. Uh, I'll leave you with what my face looks like and uh, a few stats on our current website. Uh, their addresses are on screen if you want to browse them for yourself at a later date. There's also my email address on screen if any of you have any follow-up um, questions or want to talk about building a pocket guide uh, website for the nation. And uh, yeah, let's go some questions. I'm very keen to go over questions because the more you ask, the more we learn. So don't be shy. Oh, 22 years old, 100% uh, pure. That is, uh, that is a number and a half. Mm. But that, that shows the longevity of a really good um, campaign. So just I'm um, just replying to, I just uh, quickly opened the chat and saw that Tony um, said that 100% pure New Zealand is 22 years old. Man, I actually did nothing that was that old. Um, they successfully kept it relevant for a very long time, which is yeah. quite amazing it as is. well. Yeah. Um, We've, uh, yeah, the, the floor is open uh, for any questions. Um, if you'd like to ask a question in person, uh, please unmute and um, ask away. Uh, if you're still quite shy, you can send it over on chat and uh, we'll, um, I'll, I'll facilitate those questions for you. Um, but uh, here's a message from uh, Sebastian from uh, FSM to help make yep or micro Indonesian pocket guide website so uh robin what does a specific destination have to do to get a pocket guide website like um tonga and Niue? um well just basically contact us and set up a zoom meeting like this one together um the whole thing won't cost you more than a family so it's pretty uh, much riskless to start the dialogue with us right now and um, yeah, the amount of planning and work that goes ahead before even the first family is, is quite large. So it's never too early to get the ball rolling. I know that we can't travel right now, but we are still uh, planning ahead. And uh, luckily, there is actually a couple of NGOs that have reached out recently to get the ball rolling. And uh, if you are only representing a business and you would like your destination to be um, to get a pocket guide website themselves, um, you are more than welcome to get started with the conversation with us and include your NTOs in it and um, and get a whole industry wide discussions going. Um, we we have good success working with um, private business organization as well as uh, just, uh, you know, Ministry of Tourism and everything like that. Should I read what uh, Simata has on the on the chat? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so Simata says um, Simata is shy. She doesn't want to say it herself. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. She says, moving forward, how confident are future travelers with using social media to buy a trip to your destination? 
Um, so from the data that we actually have gathered, uh, we get much greater conversion for from people that come from editorial content. So travelers, which comes from a piece of editorial content rather than um, than coming from social media. So social media is still an extremely, extremely strong place for travelers to actually um, dream and the dream stage when I was going over the different stages. Um, it's a very, very good place for that. But for when it comes down to actually um, planning and booking, they usually rely on editorial. Now, there is a caveat that with a couple of social media, such as YouTube and Pinterest, they do have a really high uh, legitimacy ranking um, about, uh, for, for travelers. Actually, we do, um, we do get um, pretty good um, content on there as well. Um, so yeah, so those two ones are, are a little bit different. And because they've been more long form type of uh, content for, for YouTube, when we talk about video or even on Pinterest, where you can actually have full boards full, of, um, full of, of a lot of really good content that therefore link usually into editorial content. It's very rare for a pin on Pinterest that will link to um, just, uh, just a social media or something like that. It will directly link usually to to a blog post or to, you know, for example, for us, we do use Pinterest to actually link to several of our, of our larger pieces of content. So um, travelers don't necessarily buy a lot of like trip on social media. They get inspired for sure. They get triggered to starting doing their research, but buying actual travel products on there, and it's not really the case. It's not like, for example, beauty products are absolutely amazing on social media. People see a, 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 an Instagrammer using it and promoting it. It's a couple of clicks. But at that point, we're talking about like 30 or 40 bucks, right, at most. Uh, sometimes beauty products are really expensive, but uh, I mean, I won't tell you how much my lipstick costs. Uh, but, um, but yeah, um, I, small purchases is much much easier to convert on social media than it is to actually large purchases such as a trip. Now, the second part of the question is, is Pocket Guide available on apps? So uh, the Pocket Guide website are actually websites. And the reason why we actually design it that way is that everybody has a phone and everybody is able to actually go on the internet on their phone. Therefore, that means that we literally can help 100% of the travelers to your destination. And most people start their search and actually find the first time about us on Google. And so in order to actually uh, do that work for an app, it's much harder. You need to rank on the, on, the, on the app store. You also need to actually have travelers wanting to find an app first. So um, usually people just use us through uh, the web browser on their phone. So yes, we are on the phone, but they use us through the web browser. Now a little um, insight about why the name is Pocket Guide. Um, it's because basically you can have it in your pocket thanks to your phone, but also there is an app uh, or even in the browser extension called Pocket that you can use. And when you download that, you can actually download full pages um, to be able to use them all offline. So a lot of people, and we noticed that with our, the previous iterations of our website, a large, large section of audience was actually using Pocket and basically they were browsing the site and saving a lot of our content um, on, on Pocket. So we're like, oh, I may as well embrace it fully and, uh, and go with that. Uh, with that. So yeah, so basically for the sake of universal coverage, that's why we don't do apps. It's something that we may be looking into. It's kind of like, it comes onto the table as a conversation in, in, in um, for the board here, probably every year. And uh, every year it's kind of like we weigh the pros and cons. And so far we haven't uh, balanced, haven't ticked yet. Um, and third part of your question, Simata, she said, you mentioned analytics, for example, Tonga. How regular do you send the analytics to NTOs? It really depends on their needs. So for Tongas, for example, if you are subscribed to the newsletters of the Ministry of Tourism, I actually give uh, some few stats every single week because they just ask me to do it. So I have that. Uh, we have a small section on the uh, uh, Ministry of Tourism of Tonga newsletter in which I give a, a bit of a marketing tip and I also put a few stats from the week. So I give that every week. Um, sometimes I do have meetings with the CEO of Tonga and we actually discuss more in-depth stats and everything. So it really depends on the needs of, uh, of the NGO. Uh, whenever they ask for it, I'm happy to do that. Um, other thing that we've done, for example, for the um, Tonga tourism, they ask us a few, um, a few uh, to run a bit of a survey before when they were doing the consultation for uh, whale regulation, when they changed the whale regulation in the country of Tonga recently. So we are we are able to provide them with some uh, travel travelers sentiments and those kind of qualitative surveys for them uh, in order to help them um, uh, with the decision process. We obviously had, they just asked us a couple of questions. They're like, let me run the survey. I ran the survey for a few months, give them the results. So I wasn't in charge of, I don't know how much of an impact it had in the in the end products of the legislation, but we are able to do that for them as well. And all that, by the way, was done free of charge. Um, there was nothing, um, yeah. 
Cool. Uh, that's Simata yeah. right here. Thank you very much, Robin. You've been very helpful. No worries. Uh, anyone else has any other questions? I guess we'll pick up uh, her fourth question from a uh, registration uh, form. Um, from Simata, uh, what's a suggested timeline for Pacific Island countries to rebrand their marketing for post-COVID-19? Welcome to the Simata show here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yay! <laughs> uh, all right. Shared, everyone. <laughs> Cool. So um, in, from what we're seeing, right, the worldwide signs are pointing at very positive, positive consumer sentiment toward travel. So people are kind of planning now. So we are seeing um, that already on our existing platform. So um, while you won't get really instant conversion right now, um, I actually uh, think that today or even right now and this hour, as I say in the seminar, is the best time to actually get started with, um, with you know, working out all the kinks of getting an always on marketing strategy uh, going on. So um, if, if any companies uh, or, or even destinations, um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, plan to wait uh, for post COVID until they, they get started and to strategize and to do all that, they will already have a handicap versus others that will actually have kept things up and actually have been proactive during this time. Um, for us, for instance, um, we've done more work throughout the pandemic than even before. Um, we've improved our infrastructure's uh, leaps and bounds. Uh, we've created a new host of content uh, while still planning ahead toward the post-COVID days. Uh, as I mentioned, we're already kind of working with a couple of destinations to uh, get the ball rolling. It obviously does take a time to take some time to get the uh, memorandum of understanding and everything signed up and, and, and you know, to work all the wordings and everything. Um, but we believe that everybody uh, should be taking the COVID challenge as an opportunity and to get a lot done rather than kind of wait and see and 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 just staying in a standstill. Um, so, you know, if travelers, my opinion, right? If travelers are still Googling about travel, um, we've got to still find them the answer that they're looking for. And that still means that they actually are very keen. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Ron. Um, so Sebastian asked me uh, to make a Yap or Micronesia Pocket Guide website and ask me how much. It's free, uh, so you don't have to pay yourself anything. But uh, if you want to send me an email, so there is my email address on screen right now. Feel free to flick me an email and we'll get uh, that started and we'll do a conversation together. And uh, yeah, we'll go over everything. Um, that's no problem at all, Sebastian. Um, Jale. Uh, Solivakanene. I'm not going to say last, last names. I won't be able to pronounce any of that. Uh, so Jale says, we have a lot of similar platforms that our information are being distributed. So it would be interesting to see what you are going to bring to the table that is going to differentiate you from other. The only way is to try out and see the result later. So we are looking forward to working with you. Oh, that's very nice. Um, so the way we differentiate ourselves uh, a lot, um, first up, is the way our content is built and the way uh, you know the way we build all the pages and everything. You basically just have to scan really quickly um, uh, the, the page to actually find your answer, rather than having to go through all the long form uh, like that. And the other thing that we're doing is that, um, and and it's a lot it's a lot present on our other seminar. So I may actually put the um, put a link to our previous seminar in the chat. I'll do that after I'm finished with that question. But uh, yeah, so um, that, that's that's one of the things that we're doing, right? And so also what we do is that, let's say you have a very simple question, like, can I drink the water in Tonga, for instance? Um, it's it's simple, right? Can I drink tap water? That's something you want to know when you travel, you know, like one of the number one question that Americans ask when traveling to uh, Tonga, for instance. Um, so, you know, you've got a page that kind of clearly states like, yep, yeah, okay, here's a couple of tips. Um, here's what it is. Here's the answer, yes or no. And then after, if you scroll down, you actually have in-depth information, which really reassures people. So building trust is extremely, um, is extremely powerful uh, on our platform uh, because as soon as we get such a good answer to that one question, they kind of keep on browsing with the rest. Um, the next thing that we do is that we, do, we have um, um, basically we call it algorithm funneling, which basically means that once a person comes onto one piece of content, they, they, they don't just read that, they move on to other pages and they keep on reading. The average time spent on our sites on average is three minutes and 54 seconds, which is basically about four minutes. That's a very, very, very long time spent on the site, especially just a content site like ours, where you don't have to go through a whole booking process and everything. We don't take booking ourselves. We just give them answers. So people really kind of build a trust and they come back and they, they, they use the platform a lot. 
So we basically have a much bigger retention uh, for people uh, for, for that. Uh, all right, let me just find uh, Dynasty Tools, Travel and, and in Suva. Oh, you're very welcome, Hidre. Uh, where do I have this? I may have it somewhere. I'm going to find the link of our previous. I'm going to put my chat box right here. Where is the link? Atama, do you have the link on hand, maybe? For the previous uh, webinar? Yeah, our previous webinar. Uh, how did yeah, I'll look it up. I did write it somewhere because I was like, oh, I'm going to need it. And then, you know, you know how it is. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Um, okay, no, just everybody's been really nice. Everybody, no, no more questions. We did have some extra questions before, didn't we, Atama? Yeah, um, we got a question uh, from uh, the registration form, uh, one from uh, Bruno Barron. Yep. Um, how much promoting of Fiji are you currently doing or expecting to go to do going forward, especially now that Kiwis are cashed up? Um, okay, that's a cool question. Um, so, <laughs> in all fairness, I don't know how long they're going to be cashed up for because Kiwis uh, Kiwis like to go to Australia, <laughs> Cook Islands, and and Nui is going to open uh, at some point as well. So, I don't know if they're going to be cashed uh, cashed up for a very long time, but. Uh, in all seriousness, in seriousness, we're already seeing um, significant, oh, what's going on with my screen anyway? We're already seeing significant uh, amount of interest for people uh, traveling. This, my the Zoom is going absolutely nuts. I hope you guys can still hear me and see me. But yeah, um, uh, so yeah, so there is quite a good amount of traffic on our Fiji Pocket Guide website, um, which is very encouraging. Um, and there is different trends. It's kind of interesting. So luxury, like the higher the higher end, is actually recovering much faster than the lower end um, for for travelers at the moment. Um, and uh, US and Australia vastly outnumbers uh, the uh, interest in Fiji than it is for uh, New Zealanders. So we have much greater traffic from Australians and uh, and Americans than we have for Kiwis in the in the Fiji website. Uh, we also have um, uh, upgraded all the infrastructure, infrastructures behind the site, as mentioned before. We've created a lot of new content as well on the site, and we try to respond to those new trends as well by creating extra content and everything like that. And so we did put a lot of staff investment behind it. As for it com as when it comes to actual promotion and everything, at the moment there is really no need for that since Fiji is not, yeah, it's not it's not happening just yet. But um, yeah, I don't know if uh, Kiwis are going to be uh, the, the, the people that's going to spend the most in the foreseeable future in uh, Fiji. In my opinion, maybe other countries. And, you know, I hope to be wrong. You know, New Zealand is a great market to deal with. But at the moment, I see, um, I don't see it. Oh, thanks for the link, Atama. So if you guys want to see more about uh, how we do our content and everything like that, you can check out that YouTube video right here, which is a recording of uh, our previous uh, webinar. Uh, Ursula says, no question for now. I think Simata has taken the table for Tonga. Do you think you will have an app for uh, Pocket Guide? So as mentioned, I don't think we're going to have an app just yet, right? We, we much more focus on to doing the website because everybody can access it on their phone. Uh, an app is basically trying to um, convert a traveler yet one more time, right? It's getting a traveler to want to actually find an app. And it basically would involve us having to do extra conversion. We're rather putting our conversion efforts into getting you guys to get bookings. That's more what we try to do. We try to send them to sites where they're going to be doing some bookings, right? If I have to spend most of my conversion into getting people to download my app, in, in my opinion at the moment, it would be to the detriment to the destination. My job is to put a traveler in a plane to come to Tonga and travel, not to get a traveler to download an app. If I have two different jobs to do, this may become tricky. And so for this reason, we choose to focus really hard on that one job. Uh, Simata says, algorithm and data are very important. What can't be measured can't be improved. Very true. Uh, she said, thank you very much. I can't pronounce Malo or Peter. Did I say it properly? Oh, I'm always terrible at pronouncing words. And yeah. And she's leaving. Bye-bye. Cool. Uh, did we have any other questions, Atama? Or oh, anyone um, else, by the way? Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. Oh, wait. Yeah, um, I just got a Milika. 
that says, do you, pro do you provide updates to the pocket guides created? Yes, constantly. Uh, we've done a ton, a ton, a ton of updates. Um, so as you can see on screen right now, um, there is, for example, I just, I just put different stats for each of the sites just for, um, just for the sake of, 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 you know, having a lot of different stuff. But in uh, Tonga, for the Tonga website, we already done over 600 updates since launch. And that's only about a year, a bit more than a year and a half old. So yeah, before the pandemic, is it a year? Does 2020 count as a year? I don't think it counts as a year. So let's say about a year old, but if we count 2020, it's probably two years old. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, so we've done a lot of updates. Uh, recently, we've done a lot of updates following the business group of Vaval, which has sent us a lot of different updates uh, because some um, some business over the closed as well as some information was not accurate and everything. So we've done a lot of updates over there. Uh, we've also done some updates because there was some changes in laws for international driver license. So that has already been updated on the site. Um, there was a lot of updates uh, following the launch of the Lulutai airline. So all of that has been updated as well. So yes, we do a lot of update. Most of the work, to be fair, is actually updating. I mean, the largest chunk of our work is, is updating. It is obviously a lot of work to create that much content, come on in the destinations and take all the pictures and do all those kind of things that we need and do all the research. But doing the update is a massive amount of work as well. And so, yeah. All right. And I think... Uh... Uh, I think that answers your question, uh, Melika. Um, and that uh, concludes our webinar for today. Uh, we run out of time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robin, for uh, Robin for an, uh, a very informative uh, session. Um, thank you all for your interest and your time. Um, if you do have any other questions or would like to get in contact with Robin, um, he, you can contact him directly on his um, email address there. Or if if you have any questions for us here at the SPTO, you can contact us on uh, tourism at sbto.org. Um, um, I think that's it for, uh, for today. And uh, we will be setting up the next invite for, uh, for next webinar soon. Um, have a great rest of the afternoon. Stay safe, stay well, stay healthy. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. Bye-bye.